the team that 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 wants to be relevant, wants to be in the conversation, not just here or just to participate, but actually get something done. And the way we play and our behavior should reflect that. You should look on the field and say that that team, that team cares, that team loves football, and that team is doing everything they possibly can to win the game. And 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 they're and they're and they're playing a physical brand of football that that you can look out there and say, I mean, that's what Michigan State football is supposed to be. If, if you can't look out there and say that, then we're not we're not playing to our, our identity. And like I said, we got a we're a work in progress. We got a ways to go. Thanks, Coach. Our next question question is from Jared Ramsey with Impact Sports. Hello, Coach. Uh, on Saturday, you guys were able to completely shut down Northwestern's running game, uh, held them to 63 yards. What did you see from the front seven uh, that led to that success? And do you think it's, do you think you can duplicate it going forward? Yeah, like I said, we're looking for consistency and performance. We're only as good as our next play. We're only as good as our next practice, you know? And so uh, in our front, you know, when you play with good technique, and good pad level and you come off the ball and you and you see a little so you can see a lot and you strike guys and you look to knock people back and use your hands and then you know finish on the football and when you're one on one when you're box and the guys know where they're supposed to be you know they 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 do their job first and maybe they can help out everyone knows where they're supposed to be everybody do your job and you play with enough toughness you know you got a chance to stop some people and that's what you know we're getting at we're getting to that you know we still have some some uh some things that we need to improve upon you know there was some some a couple of plays in there to hit that you know we you know we just didn't control our gap like we needed to and, and we were kept more than capable of doing that you know but i mean it's just you know we, we need to be able to set the edge and build a wall in the run game if you can't stop the run okay uh you can only you can only go so far because you need to be able to take away the run game and force people to feel like they have to throw the ball to beat you. And then, and, but if they can do both, it's gonna be a long day. You might as well just start the bus. Following up on that, can you speak to the performance that Naquan Jones had on Saturday and what you saw in film when you look back on it? Yeah, Naquan, he, he's got some juice. He's a big guy, he's active in there. Thought he played with better technique. Thought he had real good focus. And, you know, I thought he, you know, when he was in there, I thought he gave really good effort. And so that's what you want inside. You want an active guy in there that's tough to block in the run game and then can get some pocket push and, and you know, and, and, uh, and really be a pocket collapser, you know, in the pass game. And so um, that was, you know, he, he you know, he, he made some, he, I think he's getting, he's getting better as a, and we need that. You know, you're, yeah, it matters who's out there playing for you. You know, the, the actual players, it actually matters who's playing. And then if you have players that can play good, can play well, then those players need to play well. You know, good players got to play good. You know, if you want to, if you want to have consistency in performance, you want to have success, guys that, that can make plays uh, need to make them. And so that's what we're working towards to be able to, make the plays that we're supposed to make based upon the guys we have. Next question, I'll go to Patrick Murphy with 24-7 Sports at Ohio State. Hey, Coach. Um, assuming this game gets played this weekend, uh, it'll be the first time in Ohio State's history they've had a black head coach with Larry Johnson stepping in. Um, I, obviously, you're familiar with the history of Ohio State, so I'm curious what that means to you. Um, and, and in the Big Ten, I know I saw somewhere that this hasn't happened very often. What does that mean to you as, as a black head coach to see that in the, for this team and for this conference? I mean, it's good to see. I mean, everybody knows that Coach Johnson is one of the best in the business. And, and obviously that, that shows that they have a tremendous amount of respect and confidence in his ability to uh, not uh, teach, motivate, and develop players and recruit, but also lead. You know, lead a lead a lead a lead a staff, lead a team, lead an organization, um, and so um, you know, I like you know that's I think that's a I think that's a good thing. It's, I think it's good to see, and and obviously you know everyone knows his reputation in the business. You know, he's he's more than capable of doing doing all of those things. 
Our next question will go to John Nile, the Detroit News. Hey, Mel, off topic a little bit, but wondered if you've had a chance to talk or text with your old teammate, Daryl Bevel, since the weekend, and maybe how excited you are for him to get that opportunity as an NFL head coach, whether it's an option here or elsewhere. Yeah, I haven't talked to Bev yet, but that's I'm going to write that down because <laughs> I need to call my guy. Yeah, I've known Bev for a long time. I remember he when he came to Wisconsin, he was coming off his Mormon mission. And so and I think Brad Childress was our OC, and I think Brad had coached him before he went on his mission, like in Northern Arizona or something like that. So when he comes in, he hadn't he hadn't worked out. He hadn't done anything for like two years. He hadn't picked up a football in two years. They were like, who is this, who is this guy? Where did this guy come from? And that's how you know he's leading us to the Rose Bowl a couple years later, man. So. Um, I've known him a long time, man. He's 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 a great he's a great guy, and he's uh he love he loves coaching. Um, any advice for him? You've been through what he's about to go through here now in the interim role, and I guess what would what what would the advice be for somebody in that spot? Yeah, you know what? Um, I don't know if I have any advice to give him. You know, every situation is 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 different. You know, I just I'm just wishing he and his team, you know, the best. You know, and. Uh, it's really, it's really, uh, you know, for me, uh, having done, I think this is my 24th year of coaching. You know, I know a lot of those, I know a lot of those guys, you know, like I know Matt, you know, I know Bev, I know a lot of those guys on those staffs and, and on those uh, in the college and pro. So when the carousel starts to move and you see things start to happen, um, you know, it, it sometimes it's a bittersweet type of deal too, because you know, you know all the guys involved. You know, like I like I coach for Romeo Cornell, right. I'm, so I'm pulling for him hard. You know, but at the same time, he's taking the place of somebody else that you know. You know that type of deal. So it's uh, you know, you're just pulling for guys that, to to put their best foot forward, right? And hopefully to have some success. You know, we're all trying to we're all trying to we're all trying to win games. Thanks, man. Yeah. Next question is from Stephen Brooks with 24-7 Sports. Hey, Mel. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, I want to ask you whether spoken or unspoken, you know, how much do you view, look at Ohio State as a measuring stick as you try to build this program? I mean, you, I think you alluded to it earlier. They're sort of the, you know, the, the premier team in the conference right now or have been recently. Is that a thing where, you know, in recruiting and practice, you know, you're making decisions saying, can this beat Ohio State or will this guy help us beat Ohio State? And, you know, does it go that far, I guess? Or how much do you uh, really just sort of view them as a measuring stick again as you try to build this program where you want it to be? I mean, it absolutely goes that far. You know, it has it has to go that far. It's not just, you know, because, you know, you have to be able to, you have to be able to win your league, you know. So when you're in the NFL or – uh, college, you know, and you know who's in your division, who you you, you have to build your team to, to be able to beat those teams. You know, it happens in all different types of sports. I mean, if you know who you're going to be playing against, and you know who you got to beat, then you got to build your team to beat, to, to, to compete and beat those teams, you know. Um, and so, and when you look at, um, the top teams in the in the in the country, you know, in the past few years, you know, whether when I was at Alabama or if I was at Georgia, you know, you're playing against Oklahoma, you're playing against these these uh, these teams, you know, the Alabamas, you and you're one of those teams, and so you know what those teams look like, you know what they're going to look like. So, regardless of who shows up in the in the CFP whatever teams are there, they're, those, four, they're, they're, those teams are going to look a certain way. They're going to be big. They're going to be fast. You know, they're going to have, they're going to have dominant defense line and they're going to have a big offense line. They're going to have speed at the skill positions. You know, they're obviously going to have, they're also go, obviously going to have a winning quarterback. Okay. And then they're going to have uh, linebackers that are, that are long and can run. They're going to have edge pass rushers, and they're going to have long DBs that can hunt the ball. And on special teams, they're going to have really good specialists, and they're going to have 
uh, very strong special teams with big bodies that can run. There are some of them are uh, stars, but some guys are going to be backups. And you know what those teams are going to look like physically. And you know at the level of coaching that they're going to be at. So you, 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 you better recruit to that level. And you better ask those questions. Can we beat this team with a player like this? And if the answer is no, then then and and you're still and you're still acquiring those players. Then how are you ever going to get to that level to have a, a ability to compete? Because it's not like you can just sprinkle dust on guys. I mean, good players make you a good coach. Great players make you a great coach. I mean, you can coach guys up, and that's what, what you got to you got to develop the guys you have. But at the same time, you know it does matter who's out there playing. And that's, and that's what we, that's why it's, recruiting is so, is, is so critical. It's very critical. And going off that, I guess a little bit, um, do you expect this game to be, uh, you know, win or lose at the end of it? Do you think you'll look back and use this as a, as a big data point to show how far you guys want to be to be in that annual conference contender, or will it just be similar to, you know, to the previous five, I guess, in terms of, it's all just one data point in our evaluation. No, well, you know, we'll just have to see how that goes. I mean, that's, uh, you know, right now we're just focused on our day-to-day -day preparation and what it takes to, to get our guys ready uh, for the weekend. You know, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't believe in self-imposed limitations, you know, so, you know, what, can or can't get done, you know, I'm not putting any limitations on that, you know, and then, you know, you have to, you have to, you, you go into a game and you go into a game and you, and you come out of a game and depending on how that game goes or, or, or what you saw, you know, then you have to put it into some type of context, you know, but you don't really totally know that until after the game has been played. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Our next question, we'll try to get to everybody once here before we wrap up. We'll go to Rico Cooney with Spartan Magazine. You're on mute, Rico. Good afternoon, Coach. Hey, um, when you uh, look at this Ohio State team, obviously, you know, each year Ohio State has great teams. But when you were looking at this team, was there something that you saw on film that really caught your eye or was it just kind of this is Ohio State? No, I mean, uh, every team, you know, every team you play, you look and um, you know, every, every, every team's got good players, right? On either side of the ball on special teams and, and you, we do scouting posts on the players and we give them grades. And so everyone has good teams. Just when you look at a team like Ohio State, they actually have more good players. You know, they would they have multiple good players on each side of the ball, maybe not just two or three. They, you know, they're looking at, you know, five, six, seven guys. You know, that's the difference, you know. And uh, so you, you don't you don't necessarily look out at a particular position group or a, a particular uh, uh, position and, and say, hey, you know, they're 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 not very strong here. Or they don't have, you know, they're, you know, they have some players here that are probably, you know, not up to par that we can, that we can really, really take advantage of. You don't, you don't really just look at that team and see a whole lot of that. That's because they, they've recruited well, you know, over the years, you know, and they, you know, they, they have a lot of, they have a lot of players that are going to be, that are going to be playing on Sunday. Wait, as a quick follow up to that, coach, do you think, um, with them not having Ryan Day on the sidelines, do you think that makes a big deal? I mean, Nick Saban wasn't on the sideline for the Iron Bowl, but do you think that makes a big deal when the head coach can't be on the sideline or, or just something like that in this modern day age doesn't really matter? You know, I don't know. It just depends on the team. You know, it depends on the team. It depends on the staff. I think it depends a lot on what that head coach's game day responsibilities were or usually are and what his involvement has been, you know, during the week and what, and, and, and how much of that involvement is still able to take place. You know, I think every situation is, is, is different. 
and then you know how involved the head coach is with the players and the individual team and and you know how and, and if the if the the relationships and how they connect with the players and all, everyone else you know um if a, if someone's present um or they're, they're absent you know that you know how much does that affect the dynamic of the team you know individual players or one side of the ball or the staff you know you just don't know every every team's different i'm not expecting i'm not expecting to to see them you know operating like at a disadvantage or anything less than what they're capable of playing because of any anything like that i'm expecting them to be you know at their best and you know playing their best football that they played this season i mean they got good staff over there great staff and they got great players so I would imagine that they're, you know, they're going to be a, probably a better version of what we've seen on film. Thank you. We have time for a couple more for Coach. We'll go to Audrey Dahlgren with WLNS. Hi, Mel. Kind of going off of that a little bit, this is going to be a pretty big game for your secondary. So based upon the number of deep shots that Ohio State likes to take down the field, what do you want to see out of them this week in improvement wise, maybe from Shakur, or how do you hope that they also relish in this opportunity uh, to go up against a team like Ohio State in that aspect? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's going to come down in the back end, you know, to have respect for the deep part of the field, make sure we're all on the same page, you know, great communication, great technique and fundamentals and great eye discipline. You know, and we have to do a really good job on the perimeter on block destruction and tackling. Um, so, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure on those guys to, you know, to uh, to do a great job in zone and man coverage and also, you know, support, you know, in the run game and be high percentage tacklers. And, and um, you know, and, you know, they're going to be tested. And, and so that, that's an awesome challenge, awesome challenge for them. We have got to have a, a great week of preparation. And our rush and our coverage has to work together. You know, that's very important. You know, we have to be able to have a coordinated pass rush, um, you know, lip, limit the, the scramble opportunities for the quarterback, you know, try to contain him where we can. It's he's, 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 he's almost impossible to do that, but you got to put together a plan to, to try to do that. Okay. Um, and so, uh, and we got to be able to, you know, be able to make plays on the ball, and we got, and we got to be able to get pressure on the quarterback, so that, you know, so that, you know, we we have, you know, we we give our our guys a chance to cover them, you know. So it's a double-edged sword, and so you know we got to figure out a way to get it done, um, you know, scheme-wise and you know technique and fundamentals, and but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure our guys will be up for the up to the challenge. I'll be interested to see what they had to say about it. Thank you. Our next question will go to Lindsey Huddleston. Thank you. Hey, Mel. Um, earlier, you talked about the right player. Can you share in your experience what are some of the characteristics of the right player, especially when you have players that go up against an undefeated team that has some type of conference or title type contention? What are some of those characteristics of guys who can go up and, and deliver the upset for you? You're talking about the type of player that that's, that's like the the – can win for you or the type of player that, that we're looking for in our program. How are you looking program. for in your program in particular? Yeah, uh, first and foremost, like I said, the first day I got here, you know, if you love football, you know, I'm probably going to like you a lot, you know, and that's 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 very important um, because football is not the easiest thing to prepare, you know, to, to practice. It's not always fun. Um, and it, it's, it's a tough game and you know, injuries are part of the game. There's a lot of uh, pain and pressure involved day in and day out. And it's very competitive, you know, um, and it's physical. So, you know, you need, you, you want guys who love the game, um, that, that, that love practice, that see value in practice in strength conditioning and nutrition. Um, you know, you shouldn't have to, you know, that, that they're going to take advantage of the resources that we have. You know, you shouldn't have to talk a guy into eating or resting or practicing hard or wanting to be out there. You know, so first of all, you got to love the game. Um, and then, you know, second of all, uh, you know, outside of academic, obviously academically, you need to be able to get a, get the, get a degree here and compete at a high level in the classroom. But, um, you know, you have to be mentally tough, you know, um, 
you know, the, the mental aspect of the game is, is, is very important. You know, um, you know, you need to be able to, you know, understand that, you know, you're going to have to compete uh, on the day in and day out basis. You're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to be able to handle harsh criticism, you know, harsh constructive criticism. You know, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to, you know, embrace, you know, a culture of accountability, you know, and, and, and wanting to be held accountable and understand, you know, uh, that's part of a, a program where everybody's roles are clear and defined and you, there is no gray and it takes what it takes and embrace that and want that because you know that that's a winning formula. You know, we're, we're looking for, for players like that, you know, and, you know, we're, we're looking for guys obviously who, who know it, they want to be here at Michigan State. We want players that are playing here now. That it, it, it mean, it's it's important to them that they play, that they're here. You know, it's it's not that they're that it's not so much that they're coming here for what for necessarily what, you know what we can do for them. You know, they actually want to come here and play for the school. You know, and want to want to leave a legacy. And it's important when they when they put that helmet. It's important when they go into that locker room. It's important when they go into that stadium. You know, for a home game. You know, you want guys that want to understand, hey, this is what Spartan football is. I want to play this type of football for these types of coaches in this type of environment. You know, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. You want guys, you know, like that. Then obviously you want guys that, that you know, athletically um, and from a skill set standpoint and, you know, uh, you know, physically, you know, from a stature and length and size, you want you want guys that can match up with, uh, and win the one on ones, you know, against the very best best players in the country. You want that because at some point, you know, if in fact our goal is to win a national championship and build a championship team that's relevant each and every year in that conversation, which is the goal, then in order to reach that goal, you have to have players that can win those one-on-one -on -one matchups against the very best players in the country because that's what those teams have that are in that final four. That's what those teams have that are winning these leagues. They have they have lots of NFL players on their on their rosters. And you can see it on draft day. Got it. Got it. That's really helpful, Coach. Thanks and good luck on Saturday. Yep. Thank you so much. Our last question for Coach Tucker will go to Jim Comproni with Spartan Magazine. Hey, Mel, you've mentioned that Chris Kapilovic is one of the best offensive line coaches in the country. What is special about him as a coach? What what makes him in that category, in your opinion? Yeah, you know, Chris, you know, and Chris and Jay Johnson have worked together. I think it's their third spot work, third or fourth spot working together. And I think that really helps. Um, I think it really helps them both because you get open and you get open and honest communication. You get guys working together. Both guys understand the run game. Both other guys understand uh, pass protections and what needs to be done and how to get the most out of what you can do. So that 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 comp that that uh, combination of guys working together, I think, is pretty special. And it's hard it's hard to find that. With Cap in particular, um, he uh, Cap first of all is cares tremendously about his players, um, and they know that which allows him to coach them extremely hard. And um, he is relentless on the details. He does not let anything slide ever, okay? And it's either, for him, it's either good enough or it's not good enough. It's not just, that was a so-so, that was a decent job or, you know, that, 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 you know, that, that was pretty good. No, it's either, it's, either, it's either good enough or it's not good enough. And he, in the times I've seen him at, in Colorado, when I was working with him, the times I've been with him here, I've never seen him waste a second with a player, with a group of players. The minute you, you they step in the meeting room, it's on. He's coaching. They're taking notes, every little detail. And the minute they step on the field, the minute they step on the field, they're working. Every, any, any special team's time. When the offense line's not involved, they are working. I'm tomorrow like scripted out work, you know, nothing impromptu. It's the, you know, it's laid out that they're working. And then 
and then and then even at pra after practice when he calls him up, he's 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 still coaching him hard. Then as he calls him up, and then and then when they break, then they all they 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 sprint off the field. And then the and then there's and there's some guys in there they go and get extra work on their own, working on their pass sets or their snaps, or whatever. So, you know he's he's he, you know they they understand, you know this is how we this is how we how we're going to work, and you know we're not going to settle for for we're not going to settle for average. You got to raise to you got to raise to this level. He does a, he does an outstanding job, and he's a, he's preaches toughness. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. We do have one more quick question from Chris Lahr, the Detroit Free Press, before we get uh, Coach Capilla to come. Chris, thanks, Ben. Uh, thanks, Mel. Um, I, I guess last time you guys had the cancellation with Maryland, it was right around the time that the presidents changed some things. Can you kind of explain to us what the cancellation policy is now in the Big Ten in terms of potentials for rescheduling, and how long would it take you to maybe? If you have to shift gears to prepare for someone else, how long would that take? Yeah, you know uh, that's a great question, Chris. And I'd rather not get into into the weeds with that. Um, just for just for the sake of time, um, and it's uh, you know it's, it's a very fluid deal. Um, what I can say is that we are focused on preparing for Ohio State, and um, that's because that's what what you know that's what we can control and we don't have any information that would tell us not to do that and so that's where 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 my focus where my focus is and that's where it's, that's where it's got to stay that's where our focus has got to stay got to stay you know uh no matter what and and so i really don't even want to i really re really not even get into that because you know, that's not where we are. Less from the, maybe the logistical standpoint, but more from the, from the, the rule. I mean, I, that's kind of, we haven't really had any explanation from the league about that potential that, I mean, have they said, has the league said in the president's yes, if something does happen, you can reschedule within the conference. Well, for me, that's not part of, that's not part of a, a discussion or a question that I have, you know, that's, and, and that's because that's not where I am and whatever the, whatever those rules are for the league in terms of rescheduling games and, and all that type of stuff. That's really, for me, that's all hypotheticals. Okay? And it's, and for me, that's, that's not the best use of my time and my energy. Just you basically know, whoever they tell you to play, you're ready. Yeah. Because I mean, I, that's, I can't, you know, the, the, the all those scenarios and the what ifs and and you know well maybe this can happen maybe that can happen and I mean you know at you know right now I mean like how does that help me you know how does that help my football team today on a Tuesday when we're getting ready for a Tuesday practice it doesn't factor in so this, this is not in my focus thank you I appreciate that thank you thanks coach we appreciate your time today Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate what you guys do. I hope you have a, a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, go green. Well, have Coach Kabilovic here on shortly. Just a moment.
Coach will be joining us here shortly. We have about 10 minutes with Coach before he's got to run to a meeting. How we doing? There he is. All right. Uh, thanks, Coach Kapilovic, for joining us today. We have about 10 minutes. Uh, we'll have some questions in the chat, and uh, we can get started. Awesome. Our first question goes to Matt Charbonneau, the Detroit News. Matt. Hey, Chris, how are you doing today? Um, uh, obviously, we saw the running game be really successful this past week. After the first few weeks, not much was happening. After you were able to watch the film and all that, what would you pinpoint that to the most? I know a lot goes into it, but could you point out a few things that really started to come together for you guys in that game? Well, I think starting with the guys up front is they played extremely hard. Uh, they're starting to finally play with some of the intensity and pad level and technique that you're looking for. Um, I think our running backs, you know, ran harder. They were uh, specific about hitting the holes. Um, you know, obviously, then you throw in Lombardi and with him making some good checks and then also taking the ball and running it when it became available puts a lot of stress on defenses. So I just think it was the whole group and don't leave out the receivers. You know, they, they blocked really well. They were physical on the perimeter. They got to the safeties, and, and that's huge um, to have success in running game, especially against a team like Northwestern where about 90% of the time everybody on defense is eight yards from the ball. And so I, I just felt like it was a full offensive effort, and it started up front with those guys and our backs running hard. And Mel said, too, last week, I think it was, that watching film, it felt like you guys were that close a lot in the last couple of weeks, almost made him sick at times to see how close you guys were. Did you see that coming to him? Did the, the guys, the players sense that, that it was close as well? Yeah, the, the, you know, it, if you just look at the stats, it's, it's pretty ugly. And But when you're watching the games and if you're really focusing on the inside, you you saw some improvement. And really, the the week of preparation for Maryland was the best week of practice we had had all year. It was one of the few times that all five guys were out there at the same time practicing all week. And it was, I was excited to play that game because I felt like we were, we were making really good progress. And then obviously that got shut down on Thursday. And, you know, so I was, I wanted to see if our guys could respond and, and have another good week, which they did. So I, I think that like coach said, you kind of seen some things starting to change and, and we still got a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm hoping we'll continue to improve there. Thanks. Next question goes to Chris, Detroit Free Press. Chris, good to see you. Um, I, I kind of wanted to dig into a little bit about your philosophy with those guys up front. You haven't done a whole lot of rotating up, up on that line. Uh, I, I guess how much does that consistency in in continuity uh, help maybe build and develop versus maybe getting guys experience, or does it matter because you have a bunch of experienced guys who have played already? Yeah, you know, again, if, if you're in a situation where you have two or three guys you feel like you can play and there's not a drop-off, you definitely want to do that at, at times. Um, you know, our lineup has changed a little bit uh, through the season, and then we've had, like I said, we've had guys missing some practice time that made it a little bit difficult, but, you know, we, we need to build continuity. Um, you know, a lot of these guys have been injured and up and down throughout their career, so just trying to, to get them to be consistent, practice every day, and play every week is, is going to start to see us pay dividends there. So, you know, continuity is critical, like you're saying, but you do want to get to a point where you have some competition and you can play a few other guys. And, you know, that's just going to push the guy that was starting. It's going to motivate the guy that's the backup to practice hard so he knows he can get out there and get some reps. So I've, we're going to get there. It's not quite there yet. As a follow to that, two of those guys who have been in that boat that you were talking about with the injuries are, are our Curry and, and Jarvis. I mean, how have they done in terms of setting the edge for you guys out there and staying sturdy? Because I'm not – I don't feel like they've come off the field very much at all for you guys. Yeah, no, we've uh, – we're, we're depending on those two quite a bit. And, and they know that, and they've played and practiced through, you know, your, your minor bumps and bruises and injuries – and, you know, I really, if you look at those two from game one to, to Saturday night, they've improved quite a bit, which, again, I think a lot of that's being able to practice on a daily basis and play a lot. So um, those, those two guys are very important for where we're at with our depth right now, no question. 
Next question about Rico Cooney with Spartan Magazine. How you doing, Coach? Good afternoon. Hey, um, talk a little bit about uh, development in terms of guys, and I guess the guy that I'm leaning more towards is uh, Nick, uh, um, and just watching him over these past few weeks and his growth. Um, talk a little bit about him and his development and how his development has helped the offensive line as a whole. Yeah, Nick, Nick, uh, Nick has, has steadily improved. You know, Nick's got a lot of athletic ability. He's really pretty athletic for an interior guy in the center. If you see him moving around, um, he's got to continue to get stronger and, and, and probably build a little bit more of a, a base in his weight, which he's working on. But the thing that's really stood out is, is and a lot of this tied into getting the reps he's getting, is he's starting to kind of calm down. You know, the game's slowing down for him. He's able to make the calls we need him to make to get us in the right positions. And I feel like that's something that's improved each week. And and you can see the confidence just in his eyes and his face when he's practicing. And and so I'm, I'm pleased with his progress. And, and I think that his ceiling's a, a lot higher. You know, he's got a long way he can improve. And he knows that. But I love his attitude and effort. I mean, he comes to work every day. You know, it's, he's a positive person. I mean, it, there's there, there's nothing we're asking him to do that he thinks is too much, and that's that's really encouraging. It's just a quick follow up to that. When you look at your guys as a group, I mean, you you've been in this game long enough. You know that offensive line, you know, doesn't get enough credit. And then when there's a mistake, they you know they get too much <laughs> put on their shoulders. Right. Talk about these guys and this group and that kind of their mental attitude and understanding that it's a process. And, you know, they're in the middle of a process. Yeah, you know, that's where you miss the spring and summer so much because you never had a chance to really do the things you want to do in winter conditioning and spring ball to establish the mindset, work ethic, attitude, all those things early so they understand what's going to take. So it first day we were in pads was the second practice, I think, of, of the second uh, training camp. You know, it was the first time we ever had them pads together. So... We really, you know, we're, there's a lot of improvement needed to happen and not just physically, but mentally. And that's the thing that's been great is, is they have embraced it. You know, you, you see kids opting out all over the country, you know, the season's not going the way it wants to, you know, but I'm not seeing any of that. Our, these guys, they want to get better. They, they come to work every day. I think they're hungry. They, they see that, that they can improve. And so that makes, that's encouraging. That, that excites you as a coach to come every day and have another opportunity to get better on that practice field and take it to Saturday. So this, 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 we're, we should plan, we should improve through this season, you know, and then through the off season. There's a long way for us to go, but I really believe we can get there. And it's just, we just need to do it daily. Thank you, coach. We have time for a couple more. I'll try to get these questions in. We'll go to Matt Wenzel with them live, Matt. Hey, Chris, um, obviously we saw the improvement in the, on the ground the last week against Northwestern. Um, before that, you know, you guys have used as many as five running backs in the game, really spreading out carries this past week with Jordan out. You, you guys only used two for the first time all season. I was wondering what your thoughts are on that rotation, whether it, you know, I know Anthony's obviously in the portal, but uh, whether you see it shrinking as the season progresses. Yeah, you know, that's a good question. I see us playing two or three guys, you know, on a regular basis. But I think, you know, we really as an offense made a commitment to the run game this week. Um, you know, sometimes in the run game, you have to get a rhythm going. You know, you need to get those guys a, a, some back-to-back -back carries and get those old linemen some back-to-back -back runs and kind of get a rhythm going. And I thought that was something we did Saturday, you know, and, and – you know, sometimes it can look like you're being conservative, but, you know, the game plan was obviously to be physical. And at the end of the day, we all know this. We can't turn the dang ball over. And if you don't turn the ball over, that 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 lets you have more possessions, more plays, and a chance to, to get better in all aspects. And so um, I, I don't see us playing four or five backs per se going forward, but I think two or three is fair. And of the offensive linemen who had starting experience for you guys previously last year, um, especially uh, the only two we haven't seen is Luke Campbell and, and Devontae Dobbs. I was wondering if those guys could be part of the rotation moving forward the rest of the year. You know, those guys are, are working through, you know, trying to trying to work through some some injuries and, and work through just getting it, get improvement. So, I, you know, I don't know. 
if uh, we'll see them this year, you know, but hopefully if, if we don't see them this year, that we'll definitely see some improvement and see them next year. Thanks, Chris. We have time for two more questions. We'll go to Stephen Brooks at 24-7 Sports, and then we'll wrap it up with Colton Pouncey with The Athletic. Stephen? Hey, Chris. Hope you're well. Um, I wanted you. to sort of follow up on what you were just asked. Uh, I guess also Spencer Brown would be another guy I don't think we've seen yet. Um, can you give me an update on him and any other guys that you're comfortable playing right now but just haven't played yet where you kind of stuck with that five? And then maybe Blake, I think, is a sixth guy. But, uh, out, you know, that next group that you're comfortable with right now. Yeah, you know, Blake was really playing at a high level uh, those first couple games. And so hopefully we'll see him back soon. And, you know, Spencer Brown's a young man. It's got a lot of tools. And, and again, I hate to, to beat a dead horse here, but not having a spring and summer, you know, that that was something that was that's needed by all of us. But for him, that would have been huge. But I have seen him improve week to week. So, you know, he's a guy that's definitely in the plans going forward. And when that's going to be, I don't know, but but he's definitely somebody we're, we're counting on. Uh, another young man, James Ohamba, is another one that has improved quite a bit throughout this season. Um, he he was, got some spot play a couple weeks ago and actually did a decent job. I'm starting to feel more comfortable about having him out there as well. So those two guys for sure have, have, have shown some improvement throughout, throughout this season. And, you know, when we're going to see him, I don't know, but I, I do feel like those are guys that will be in the mix at some point. And quickly, um, not, it's, uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, I've noticed when you guys are going out for offense, you you and the offensive linemen sort of have your own huddle, and then everybody else almost has their own thing, and then maybe you guys get together before you go out there. But was, what, what are the conversations in your little O-line huddle? Is that just firing them up, or is it something beyond that, you know, before you guys take the field? Yeah, you know, it, if the situation is, you know, TV timeout, or we got a little time, then we kind of do our own huddle because, you know, the things I'm talking to them about with the next series – you know, I want them to focus on me and what I'm saying and not be 11 guys in there and four coaches talking at the same time. So it's just a matter of pulling them aside, just going through the next series and, you know, all the little things that could come up, making sure that we're aware, just giving them, you know, a few, few words of encouragement where it's just us and not everybody else yelling and talking. All right. Thank you. Yep. Our last question will go to Colton Pouncey with The Athletic. Hey, Chris, uh, I know the early signing period is coming up later this month, so I just want to ask, you know, what is it that you look for in an offensive line recruit, and how do you go about identifying prospects at target? Well, you know, just for the physical attributes, the one thing you want to see from them is, is their, their athletic ability in the sense of how good are their feet? You know, do they have the ability to bend, you know, defensive uh, lines, uh, defensive uh, – you know, what they're trying to attack is they don't just line up and go straight ahead anymore. There's a lot of movement, a lot of blitzing and all those things. So you got to have guys that have some athletic ability. But And I also feel like we need to get bigger here. So that's another thing we've been looking for is, is trying to get some size. And, you know, you really, you really see them when you're looking at those guys. You know, you got some big men that maybe aren't quite athletic enough to play on the edges. So, you know, you can slide them in at guard. But then you're trying to find some of those those athletic guys with some length that can play on the edges and, and be physical in the run game, but be able to protect your quarterback. And, you know, those tackles are a premium when you're out there looking for them. And, you know, there's not a lot of them. So, um, but just going back, you know, do they have good feet? Can they bend? You know, the other thing is, is how do they play the game? You know, do they play hard? You know, if you had time and you can measure their heart and find out how much they love football, because playing the line, is, is, is really, I hate to say it's not fun, but what you do on a day-to-day -day basis probably isn't fun for them as far as in practice and whatnot. Our fun is, you know, in the meeting rooms and, and the brotherhood we have. So you got to have some guys that really embrace the grind and love the game. And back in the day in recruiting, you can, you can know a kid for three to four years and offer him a senior year. That's not happening anymore. So you really, you're trying to do the best you can to make an evaluation and talk to the people that are around them on their daily life and really try to find out, is this kid, can he handle adversity? Can he embrace the grind? And then the physical attributes mixed with that, and then, then you, you go after him. Thank you. Coach, we really appreciate your time. Thanks for taking time for, for some questions today. You bet. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, for taking the time today and I'll send the link out later today. Thanks. Thanks, Benjamin. Thanks, Thanks Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you.